Welcome to the first in a series of five videos to help you use Excel for the assignments in Math 502. In this first video, we will be exploring the very basics of Excel. When you open Excel, you will see a series of tabs at the top of the worksheet page. Each tab has a ribbon of functions that relate to that tab. The Home tab is the default ribbon that you will see. This ribbon is very familiar to what you see when you open a Microsoft Word document. There are options for font, centering, and justification of print. As well as other options that we will discuss later as needed. The Layout ribbon, again, is very similar to what we're used to seeing in Word. If we need to insert a table in our Excel sheet, the Insert tab is where we go. Probably more useful to us, though, are the options for inserting a chart. We will focus on the options given there in future video casts. Later in this video cast, we will focus on the Formulas tab. This is one of the key features in Excel. It allows us the opportunity to insert and build formulas. The other very valuable tab that we will use is the Data tab. In this tab, we have the option to order and sort data. An Excel worksheet consists of cells. Cells are where we enter data. They are named by the column and row where they appear. For example, when I click on cell 1, left corner, its position name is A1. If I move down a bit and click on the cell in the second column, third row, its name is B3. Notice that that name is also noted up here right above our worksheet. And that will be very handy later on. Let's suppose I type a list of exam grades for my class into column A. I do that by selecting where I want to start, typing in a particular grade, and entering Enter. If I want to work with all of the grades in that list, I can activate what is referred to as a range. That is done by clicking on the top grade and then left clicking and dragging my cursor down to the last grade in the column. Notice how they all gray out. The, that list is now activated. I can copy it, sort it, and use this range for all types of statistical analyses. Before we move on, it should be noted that there are three types of information that can be entered into Excel cells. The first is text. Text is the alphabetic characters or a combination of alphabetic, numeric, and symbol characters. Let's suppose that I wanted to title this particular list of grades. So I am going to go up here, backspace, get rid of the 78, and put it down at the bottom of my list and type in the word exam. That's a good example of just plain text. If I wish to enter more than one word in a cell, I need to decide how I want that to be displayed. Note what happens when I add to the word exam. It seems to spill over into the next column. I have a few choices. I can decrease the size of my font, but that could be hard to read. I can increase the width of that column by first selecting the column and then putting my cursor in between columns A and B, left clicking and pulling my cursor to the right. Still have a little bit further to go here and now I have my entire title in one column. That's fine but it makes that column fairly wide and I might not like the looks of that. So my third option would be to wrap my text. Let me undo what I just did. And now I'm going to click off of my list, select the cell that I want to wrap the text for, 
and then go up here to wrap text. Now notice when I do that, one of the nice features about Excel 2013 is that it does show you what that feature will do. You can see that right underneath. So I'm going to just click on that and there we go. Now I still have a few issues here because notice the T in assessment went to the next line. So to deal with that word being just a bit too long for the cell, I'm going to go over there and just widen it a tiny bit. But that certainly looks better than it did before and I can still read what I have. Again though, the way it looks really is up to you. So you have three options, reduce the font, make the column wider, or wrap the text. The second type of information that can be entered into a cell is numeric information. I did that when I put in the actual exam grades. I can edit my numeric information on the home tab. Notice there are options for currency and percentage. There's also an option for rounding and those are those two right here. And again, if you hover your cursor over it, it will show you that what I have highlighted now will show more decimal places to, for a more precise value or I can round back to the nearest tenth or hundredth. Now in order to have that apply to a column, I need to select the data that I would like to affect and then I can show you a few of these. For instance, if I go over to the dollar sign and click on the arrow that's next to it, I can turn all of those values to dollars. Now that's not really what I want to do, so I'm going to go up and undo it. I can click percentage, but watch what happens here. When I click percentage, it multiplies the given value by 100 and then adds the percentage. So be careful when you use this. Obviously a student did not score 8,000 percent on the exam. If I wanted that to be converted, I would have had to put the initial value in as 80 hundredths, and then it would have turned it to the proper percentage. Now if one of these numbers, and let me show you off to the side here, suppose that I had something like 5 and 345 thousandths and I wanted to round that to the nearest tenth, I can use the rounding function. Notice when I go over here and click on the decrease decimal that it will round. However, it also remembers what the number was before. So keep in your mind that this number is 5 and 345 thousandths. If I click this button once, it will round it to 5 and 35 hundredths. The last type of information that we can enter into cells is formulas. If you want to enter a formula by hand, you always enter the equal sign into the cell first. For instance, suppose I want to multiply the number in cell A2 by the number in cell A3 and put the results in B3, right here. I'm going to go up to the formula ribbon because I think it's easier up there. You can see the entire formula. You can type it either place, but I like to go up here when I'm entering a formula. I put in my equal sign. That lets Excel know that a formula is coming. And now I want to multiply, again as I said earlier, the number in A2 by the number in A3. So all I have to do is go over here to A2, click on that cell, and notice what happens. We have the dashed line around it saying that that cell has been activated and its value has been put up here. Now I have to put in the symbol for multiplication and I want to multiply that by the number in A3. So I'm going to click on that. does it in a different color so that I can see what's happening here. And once I have what I want in there, I press enter. Lo and behold, it just multiplied 80 by 89, giving a product of 7,120. So that is how you enter a formula into a cell by hand. You also can put in the cell locations yourself manually if you want to into the formula, but it's much easier just to click on them.
One thing to remember is that Excel follows order of operations. In other words, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. For instance, suppose I type this formula into cell A3. So I'm going to take out what's here just by pressing the backspace. And I'm going to go back up here, put in my equal sign. And I'm going to type in A6 minus parentheses A3 plus A4. close my parentheses, divided by A5. Excel will follow order of operations and add A3 and A4 first, divide that answer by A5, and then subtract that quotient from A6. If I go back and click on that cell, it shows me the formula that gave me the answer of 63.011111. Let's move to the formula ribbon for a moment. Suppose I want to add up the exam values that I have listed in preparation for finding the mean. I can do that using AutoSum. Now, I've showed you what happens when you click on AutoSum. You get a number of various options. You can add up the numbers, you can find the average, aka the mean, of those numbers. You can figure out how many numbers you're counting. You can find the maximum value or the minimum value. And they go on and you can look at more functions as well. We just want to add our values up. The first thing that you want to do when you do that is to click on the cell directly under the numbers that you wish to sum. So in this case, I'm going to highlight cell a10. Then I'm going to go up to Auto Sum, highlight Sum, click on that, and notice that it took the first numeric value that it saw in that column, which was A2, all the way down to A9. They put a colon in between those values to show that all would be considered in this sum, and they are going to add that value up for us. It's a good idea to always label what you're doing, so I'm going to put sum over here in column B, cell B10, so that I remember that that was a sum. And to clean this up a bit, I'm going to go back up here, delete what we already did. So now we've added up those values. We would like to find the mean of those values. What I could do here is just, again, go down to the next line and type in equal to let Excel know an equation is coming. Ask it to take the sum that we just found and then divide it by the number of values that we added. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We get a mean of 85.25 for this particular group of values. When we just did that, it took us two steps. First we found the sum, and then we found the mean. We actually have various options to do this in just one step rather than two. Remember for a moment, you may want to jot it down, that our mean, in fact I'll put it over here so we don't forget what we got, our mean for this particular group of data was 85.25. Now I'm going to delete these cells out of here and look at a few other ways to do this. One other way to find the mean for this particular set of values is to again click on the cell directly below the list of numbers that I want to find the mean of, go to auto sum and ask it to average. I wish they used the word mean but we will settle for the word average here. It's going to give us the formula to do that once we press enter, there's our mean again. Another option, if I take that one out of there, would be to type in our equal sign and then physically type in the word sum. Notice when I do that a whole list of possible formulas come up there, 
but what I would like to do to find the mean, remembering the process, is to add up the numbers and divide by the number of values. So I actually want to take the sum of the numbers, and I'm going to go over here and select the range from A2 to A9, close my parentheses, and then divide by 8. So any way you do it, you're going to end up with 85 and 25 hundredths for the mean of these exam grades. Excel just gives you plenty of options to do that, which is one of its powerful features. If you click on the insert function icon in the upper left hand corner, you will notice that you are given a variety of functions to pick from. Now what it's doing here is typing up what I most recently used. But if I click on the icon next to that, I can see that there are all kinds of options of different types of formulas. And for our purposes, statistical is where we're going to be most often. Here's the average that we used through AutoSum. As we scroll down this list of possible formulas, you will see that there are many different options that we could use. Count will give us back the number of cells in the range. And it's nice because if you click on one, it will tell you what it does down here. And it will tell you how to set it up if you want to do it yourself right there. It also, if we keep on going, if I select max, it will tell me the maximum grade in my list in column one. Median will tell me the middle number out of the set. Min will tell me the smallest number in the set of data. It does have quartile functions. However, Excel does not compute quartiles the way that we do in statistics. Instead, it uses percentiles. So please do not use the quartile function. We'll talk more about that later on when we set up box plots. It also will compute standard deviation from a sample or from a population. In our particular course, we'll use that to find the standard deviation from the sample of numbers that were given. So that's an important function as well. You will find that for some of our work in statistics, we need to put our data in order from smallest to largest. And that's one of the functions of the data ribbon. So if I click on the data tab, you will see that we have a number of different options here. So I'm just going to go back and reselect our values. And notice when I do that, everything in that ribbon bar suddenly got nice and dark. That means it's ready to go. And I want to sort my data. And when I hover over the key, this would sort it from smallest to largest or from largest to smallest. If it's a numerical value, smallest number up to the highest number. If, if it's text, it will sort it alphabetically, either from A to Z or Z to A. But in my particular case, I'd like to put these exam grades in order from smallest to largest. So I'm going to click on this top option right here. And notice what just happened. In a blink of an eye, our grades now go from 65 to 95, placed in order, which would make it easy for us to find the median and later on when we get to that, the quartiles. Another nice feature in Excel is that you can perform the same operation on a list of data. We know that the mean for this data is 85 and 25 hundredths. Suppose we wanted to subtract that mean from every value in our list. I start by setting it up for the first value. So right here I'm going to put in an equal sign and then I'm going to select my number and subtract my mean from it, which I know is 85.25. Now because I don't want that number to change, I'm just going to type it in. There are other ways to get it in there so that it remains constant and doesn't change. But in this particular case, the easiest option is to type it in. When I press Enter, it subtracts 85 and 25 hundredths from 65, giving me a difference of negative 20 and 25 hundredths. Suppose I wanted to do this for all of the numbers in my list. Rather than typing it in individually for each one, I'm going to hover over the cell and, until I see a nice dark cross in the lower right hand corner. Once I see that, 
I'm going to left click and then drag down and that dark cross should remain visible. As soon as I let go of that left click button, notice it has taken 85.25 and subtracted it from every single value. So if I go up here and click on cell B3, notice that it changed A2 to A3. I go down one, now I've got A4 highlighted up here and so forth and so on all the way down. My last hint before we close this screencast is to remind you not to forget to name your sheets. You can put more than one sheet of information into an Excel file. If you look down at the bottom here, we have the default, which is Sheet 1. If I double click on that, it becomes highlighted and I can actually label it with what is on the page. In this particular case, it is Exam Grades. If I'm going to go on and do more work and I would like to be able to just upload into homework or tests or whatever, just one Excel file. I can go over here to the plus sign, click on that, and I will have a new sheet to work on. So you don't, if you have five problems to do for a particular assignment, you don't need five separate Excel files. You can do five sheets labeled in the same file. I hope you found this screencast helpful as you get started working with Excel. I do realize that you may not have Excel 2013, but I think you will find that all of the versions of Excel for the PC are very similar. Thank you for viewing.